Last month, one of my patrons, hi Chris, asked for my uh, Patreon Q&A, like monthly live stream, what's the deal with ivermectin? And I was really annoyed because at the time, I had no idea what the deal with ivermectin was. So that sent me on a deep dive uh, into why a horse dewormer was the talk of the town. And honestly, guys, the monthly Q&A is not supposed to require that much work. Ask me like my favorite Triscuit flavor black pepper. There. See, wasn't that fun? Anyway, patrons uh, then asked if I would turn my answer into an official video. So here we are. Hello. So the original question from my patron was basically, how did an anti-parasite medication for horses become a commonly used way to treat a virus in humans? Like, a virus is not the same as a parasite, like a worm, right? And a human is not the same as a horse, right? Well, for a start, just because a medication treats one thing in one species doesn't mean that it can't also treat something completely different even in another species. So while it is objectively hilarious to mock people who say they won't take the COVID vaccine because they don't know what's inside of it, and then they instead prefer to eat horse dewormer paste, it's not actually a rational counter argument because, you know, we have examples of things like this happening in the past. Pfizer researchers stud studied an enzyme blocking drug called uh, sildenafil as a treatment for high blood pressure and chest pain. But now people uh, take it to get boners <laughs> because you might know it as Viagra. Uh, thalidomide was used in the 1950s as a sleep aid and anti-nausea drug until it was found to cause severe birth defects uh, when taken by pregnant women. In 1964, a doctor happened to give thalidomide to a patient with leprosy and found that it actually helped his painful skin condition. And later, doctors discovered that it could also be used for some cancers like uh, myeloma. How does one drug cure nausea, cause birth defects, heal leprosy sores, and treat cancer? Well, researchers still don't really know. Uh, that's right, the exact mechanism of action, as it's called, of thalidomide is still unclear, despite thousands of studies attempting to figure it out. It's complicated. So just because a medication isn't known to help with a condition doesn't mean it can't help with that condition. And it's possible for a medication to help with a condition even if researchers still don't know why. They don't know how it works. Ivermectin has been around since the 1970s as an anti-parasite drug for both humans and animals. Um, the reason why you see it commonly referred to as a livestock dewormer is simply because pharmacies have been running low on it. So people have been getting it from feed supply stores. Uh, it's the same drug, but generally humans need way less than say horses. So the stuff at the feed store is going to be much more concentrated. It works by attacking the nerve cells that are found in the bodies of invertebrates, which are luckily not found in the bodies of vertebrates like you or a horse or a sheep. So you can safely take it and it will kill the worms inside of you. However, over the years, scientists have tested ivermectin for its potential other properties like antimicrobial and antiviral. For instance, in 2012, researchers found that in a petri dish in vitro, ivermectin uh, interferes with the replication of uh, yellow fever virus. And then further testing revealed that it also slowed down the replication of dengue fever, Japanese encephalitis, and tick-borne encephalitis viruses. All of those viruses have something in common. They are from the genus Flavivirus all single-stranded RNA viruses. Zika is also part of that genus, which is why ivermectin was also tested against that in 2016 and found, again, in a Petri dish to be effective. The precise mechanism of action was unknown. Over the years, there have been a handful of other viruses that ivermectin seemed to prevent from replicating in petri dishes, nearly all of them single-stranded RNA, but a few that were DNA viruses, like one specific strand of horse herpes. 
<laughs> I'm sorry. I know I made a whole video about how we need to stop shaming people for having herpes. Like it's not that big of a deal. But the phrase horse herpes is very funny. So anyway, all of those studies with positive results were done in vitro, meaning in a test tube or in a Petri dish and not in a living organism. While there have been a few in vivo studies, studies done in a living organism, mice, uh, the results were nowhere near as good and they still required massive amounts of ivermectin to do anything. And all of that is why back in June of 2020, some doctors threw together a systematic review of the studies that had looked at ivermectin's uh, effects on viruses. Their conclusion back then was this. As noted, the activity of ivermectin in cell culture has not reproduced in mouse infection models against many of the viruses and has not been clinically proven either, in spite of ivermectin being available globally. This is likely related to the pharmacokinetics and therapeutic safety window for ivermectin. The blood levels of ivermectin at safe therapeutic doses are in the 20 to 80 NGML range, while the activity against SARS-CoV-2 in cell culture is in the microgram range. Ivermectin is administered orally or topically. If safe formulations or analogs can be derived that can be administered to achieve therapeutic concentrations, ivermectin could be useful as a broad spectrum antiviral agent. So essentially they're saying, here's some evidence that ivermectin might help against this pandemic, but we need way more research and we probably need to change the form of the ivermectin so that it will work without doing more harm than good when we have to give somebody a massive dose. I would now like to illustrate what happened next by use of this very helpful meme. Researchers were quickly able to show that ivermectin did reduce replication of SARS-CoV-2 in a Petri dish, which meant that the important next step was to show that it worked in a living organism. Over the next year, dozens of studies were launched to do just that. About a dozen were published, and only a few of those were of a decent size and quality. In May of 2021, a Cochrane review was published saying that absolutely nothing was learned from any of those studies, but that overall the reliable evidence available does not support the use of ivermectin for treatment or prevention of COVID-19 outside of well-designed randomized trials. Except early on, there was one large study that did show a positive result, and it was very exciting. Researchers at Egypt's Bena University followed 400 people with COVID-19 symptoms and found that ivermectin reduced the death rate by an astonishing 90%. A preprint of the paper, meaning that it had not yet undergone peer review, which has been exceedingly common during this pandemic, went online in November of 2020. Despite the lack of peer review or, you know, even getting published anywhere in any journal, uh, that study was cited by more than 30 other papers and officially kicked off the ivermectin craze. Unfortunately, it appears that the paper's data was tampered with, plagiarized, and or just completely made up. According to grifter.news, the data didn't match what the authors claimed. Like, for instance, where the authors claimed that four out of 100 people died in the standard COVID treatment group, but their raw data said that number was zero. And they publicly said that two out of 100 died in their ivermectin group, but their raw data said that that number was four. That seems important. Multiple patients in the raw data were clearly copied and pasted since they even included typos like Koga instead of cough. There are a million other red flags that are detailed very well by grifter.news, but the crux of it is this. Thousands of people are taking ivermectin uh, instead of getting vaccinated because of an obviously fraudulent study that was retracted before it was even published anywhere. So now poison control calls are up 550% in Texas, and there are Facebook pages full of people who are astounded that worms are now appearing in their poop, when in fact the worms are more likely to be stringy bits of their own intestinal lining sloughing off because they're taking concentrated doses of horse dewormer. 
I wish I could go back in time and tell the Rebecca 15 years ago that not only did she fail to make the world a more rational place, but that in 15 years, she would say that previous sentence that I just said, which I shall not repeat. Anyway, that's how we got to where we are. Uh, There are still clinical trials of ivermectin treatment for COVID-19 ongoing, but I wouldn't hold your breath. I would get a vaccine, but what do I know? I'm just a person who likes her intestinal lining to stay where it is. Thank you very much.